Hey, Brent, how are you? Recording in progress. Hey, Brent. Hey, Rich. What's up, brother? How are you? Good. Brent, with Jesse being used at defensive end, at least part of camp or most of camp, as James said, where does that leave you at middle linebacker? Uh, who's behind Ellis, and what's your confidence level in the linebackers right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, first of all, excited about Jesse having a dual role in our defense. Jesse's one of those guys like Micah, like Nick Tarbert and Cam Brown, those guys that are hybrid guys coming in, Brandon Smith to a degree, and um, you know have the ability to – to have traits to both positions. And uh, so we're able to, uh, to maximize what Jesse can do well, maximize his assets uh, by playing him some on the edge. But uh, as far as linebacker, Jesse's still training there. It's still a one-two punch with him and Ellis at the middle linebacker position. Uh, I am pleased with the development of Tyler Elsden at this point. Tyler is... Um, a good young linebacker, works very hard at it, had a great spring, got better practice after practice. I expect him to have a good camp and be in, be in position to help us if he needs to. We'll go to Tyler Donahue. Audrey Studder, you're on deck. Hi, Brent. Hope you're doing, hope you're doing well. Hey, Tyler. Uh, we just found out from James that you're likely going to be going without Adiza Isaac for most of the season, if not all of the season. Um, what in, in terms of contingency plans right now are you excited about at defensive end? What are you positive about? Because clearly that, that's, a, that's a negative. Yeah, obviously we've, you know, that's some information we've had for quite a while. So we've digested that and we've worked on a plan. And I think when you started, you know, hearing reports of Jesse Lucchetta, that's part of it. Um, but we're also very excited about Nick Tarburton. You know, I'm a, I'm a big Nick fan and, He's had some unfortunate circumstances with some injuries over the years that uh, have kept uh, everybody from knowing what, what we know about Nick. And uh, he's not just a, a very good defensive end prospect. He's one of the best leaders in our unit. So looking for a big season out of Nick. Very excited about AK and the transition he's made. He's not just a talented guy, but uh, he's an intelligent football player that has picked up our scheme and our system very well. And then uh, the guy that I'm, I'm probably most excited about for camp, which just made great strides between the spring, especially this summer with Coach Galt and his staff, is Smith Vilbert. Smith has the some similar qualities to Etor Gross Matos. You know, basketball background, very athletic, very good size. And uh, Smith's finally turning the corner. And uh, really, he's a football player for the first time and not a basketball player playing football. So he's got tremendous size, tremendous length, athletic. When I watched Smith Filbert play basketball in high school, I mean, you talk about me and Spence coming out of a, a gymnasium excited. We couldn't get over the way he could move and transition at that size. So excited about what Smith can do this camp and put himself in position to, to be a productive end for us this fall. And then, uh, you know, obviously we talked about Jesse and, Jesse's always had very good rush ability. You go back to his, his film and, and you look at the snaps where he's blitzing for us and he's pretty hard to block. He's got a good low shoulder rush. Um, I, I consider his rush ability a real positive for him. And then I don't want to discount uh, a young guy, Zariah Fisher, that we took as, a, as an inside linebacker. and He's made the transition to defensive end. Zariah is very athletic, has a great motor, uh, and very eager. So uh, I think we got a pretty good group. It has us excited. Um, we just recently decided a mean Vanover, a guy that's got great size, a very physical player that we were comfortable moving inside. We've decided to move him out. Uh, he's a little bit of a swing guy in my mind. He's a guy like Kevin Givens that could play either or. And uh, Amin is, is plays reckless, physical. He's just he's got to continue to soak at the position and learn it. But he's a guy we're excited about as well. So got a really good group. Um, obviously, it's unfortunate about Adisa. Um, was excited about him as much as anybody. Tremendous athlete, tremendous young man. And I look forward to his return. So, But a good group. Uh, we've obviously, as I said, digested this. And uh, 
that's part of the game. You know, we've all been around it, and it was full steam ahead. And what's our plan? And let's continue to get the group better. We'll go to Audrey Snyder, followed by Mike Corman. Hey, Brent. Um, along the lines of some position changes, um, just wondering if anything changed from the spring. Um, is Keaton Ellis, uh, do you expect him to go back and forth with corner and safety? And uh, we didn't ask James about it. So is Marquise Wilson, is he still over on the offense right now? Yeah. So the first question about Keaton, Keaton is uh, primarily playing free safety right now. Keaton's a guy that we feel like uh, we need to train at either or, boundary or free. Uh, we got a lot of respect for Keaton. We're excited about his abilities at the position. He's a guy, if we need, we're comfortable putting back at corner. Uh, this wasn't about him not being good enough at corner. It was about possibly his best position potential being safety. So we've got good depth at corner right now. Marquise is, is primarily working with us, but expected to have a role offensively. Uh, so, you know, Marquise is a guy, obviously, as a freshman, makes a huge play in the Cotton Bowl and a guy that uh, we know is a talent and a little bit of a ball hawk. So we've got good depth there that, that should allow us to, to really train Keaton at safety to continue to do that. But at the same time, you know, we've got some other guys that are they're mixing it up a little bit. Jonathan Sutherland, uh, you know, plays the safety spot. He's also playing some Sam for us. Uh, Jonathan's a guy we got a lot of respect for that's played a lot of ball here, special teams captain. So, again, it's it's our job as coaches to maximize guys' abilities and minimize their liabilities. And, uh, you know, we, we addressed a lot of that as spring unfolded, uh, discussed it more through the summer, and, and now there's a, there's a plan of action for a bunch of these guys. So excited about that. Got time for a couple more. We'll go Mike Torman fo- followed by Kyle Landers. Hey, Brent, your hey, leaders on defense. Uh, who are the leaders on the field and in the locker room, and what's the difference between the two? Yeah, I think that, you know, the difference between the two, to answer that part of your question, is there are certain guys that may not be as vocal. I don't know that their leadership shows up as much in the locker room as it does on the field. You know, they lead by example and work ethic and toughness and you know, the, the, the best leaders I've been around have been your most productive players, not necessarily your most vocal players. They've been the guys that do what you need them to do no matter what. Um, you know, and I think that we've got a tremendous group, maybe the best group since we've had here. Uh, we've had some good ones, but starting up front with P.J. Mustafer, unbelievable work ethic, arguably our hardest worker and, you know, and our biggest player on defense. It's a great sign when one of your defensive tackles is, is your hardest worker, first one out to the field, uh, and he is a vocal player. Um, Nick Tarburton, as I mentioned, a um, little bit more of a leader by example and work ethic and maturity, um, not so much the vocal aspect as some other guys. And then, of course, at linebacker, we're very fortunate, Ellis Brooks and Jesse Lucchetta, you know, have played a lot of football here. They've been around a long time. Uh, intelligent football players, both extremely hard workers and, uh, and both vocal guys. And then I'm, I'm probably, you know, Tariq Castro Fields, fifth-year guy, true fifth year. Uh, again, just a, a very uh, mature, uh, great worker, uh, has become a vocal leader. And, uh, you know, just tons of experience and, and excited about, about Tariq and his decision to return. And then a guy that, that to me has really impressed me and surprised me to a degree with his leadership qualities is Jaquan Brisker. He has uh, always been one of our best workers, but his consistency off the field, the maturity he shows right now, he's speaking out, he's holding guys accountable. I'm super excited about the role he's taken and the growth he's shown. So we have quite a group on our side of the football. And that's, you know, I don't want to leave out Jonathan Sutherland. Jonathan, you know, is a, is a leader on special teams, but has a big role on defense, uh, is in competition for some starting snaps. And, um, you know, is one of the more mature guys we have and, and one of our better workers. So anytime I've been around a group that, that your best players are your best workers and, and your high character guys and, and um, you know, just a ton of maturity, that's been a really, really good thing. So 
Uh, that's what uh, that's what we're working towards. Uh, we're putting it on these guys. These leaders understand that this isn't just kind of let this thing go and it rolls off your sleeve. You got to be proactive, and, and we're going to do this together. So, got a great group. And our last question is Kyle Andrews, Center Daily Times. Oh, Brent, um, I, I just wanted to ask, uh, how has Curtis Jacobs' uh, development gone? I know last year he got a lot of snaps. Um, you know, he highly touted recruit. But, um, you know, what have you seen from him, and how do you feel like he can be a leader to your defense, especially as a sophomore? Yeah, I, you know, Curtis is a guy I'm really excited about. I think a lot of people. People are, are anxious to watch what Curtis does this fall. A tremendous talent. As you remember, he, he played a, a variety of positions in high school. And you see that in his play at field linebacker. You know, he's, he's got good athleticism in space. He's got man coverage built skills. He's a, he's a very aggressive athletic blitzer. And he's a savvy football player. Um, he's determined. He's eager. He asks a lot of questions. He's still learning the position and getting comfortable in the defense and getting comfortable with adjustments. But, um, you know, Kurt's one of those guys that could lead by example this fall in his work ethic and his production. So I'm excited about Kurt and what he's, what he's going to do out there to the field. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. And we'll have Coach Yersich up next.